So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, iPhone 14 Pro Max versus Galaxy S22 Ultra speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go and see which one is faster. Now, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra did launch earlier this year. So it's going up against the latest and greatest iPhone 14 Pro Max with its A16 Bionic. This one over here has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, not the newest one that came in the Z Fold 4, but slightly before it. And the iPhone 14 Pro Max with its dynamic island says, sit down, Samsung. This time it's going to me. So definitely the boot up is faster. Some people say, Nick, bro, look, I don't care about the boot up. Stop doing that test. Look, I turn on my phones off and on all the time. You may not, but I do. And I think some people may want to see how fast it does turn on. So iPhone does turn on faster than the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now, when it comes to unlocking these devices, they are very different. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is using that dynamic island as well as Face ID within that area to showcase it's unlocking and do it pretty much the same they've been doing it for years. So just look down very fast. Also, if you have raised to wake and lifted, you'll get in very quickly, very fast, very secure. Samsung does use an in-display fingerprint sensor, which I quite like because it's very accurate. It's a pretty big sensor compared to some of the other Android phones out there. So it's very fast, very secure. Also, Samsung does have face unlock here, which can actually just bypass that swipe mechanism. So I'd say overall, the win goes to Samsung here in terms of speed of unlocking. The iPhone is just not quicker when it comes to unlocking the phone. However, the iPhone is still very secure and it is fast, but I just think Samsung's a little faster because you have a fingerprint sensor. You literally, once you start knowing where it's at, you don't even have to look. You just kind of remember where that fingerprint is. And then the, the face ID cannot outlast or just be faster than something that just bypasses that swipe. So definitely quicker over here on the right. Now, when it comes to actually going through these phones in terms of speed, they both do use 120 Hertz adaptive refresh panels. We do have one UI 4.1 over here on the right. 5.0 might be smoother, but overall these days, Samsung's one UI and Apple's iOS are pretty much neck and neck in performance in terms of just kind of how they look. Both are incredibly smooth, especially when we're talking about high end Samsung over here. This thing is butter. So definitely very nice overall, I would say. If you're looking for a super smooth phone, either one of these in their general operating system is going to provide it for you. So quickly confirming software, we do have One UI 4.1 version on Android 12. I am on the latest update it is capable of getting right now, officially OTA. You can see over here on 14 Pro Max and Space Black, we are looking at iOS 16. 0.2 as of the recording of this video. All right, guys, so we've arrived at the app test. One of my favorite tests of the year, the best Samsung versus the best iPhone. Let's go into calendar. You can see pretty similar calculator, pretty similar clock, pretty similar weather, pretty similar. Let's actually show these apps. They're actually both nice and updated. They have great features and you can see the scrolling just super smooth on both phones. Very nice. Let's go into Play Store App Store. You can see again, super smooth on both phones. We'll head up out of there and look at those animations, almost identical. We'll go into Instagram. You could see pretty much the same. We'll hit the profile page. Apple there, pretty similar. Again, man, these, these phones are definitely neck and neck. Let's head up out of there. We'll go into Twitter. I notice if you swipe away too hard then the app kind of flies all crazy on the Samsung phone, watch this. See how it does that? If I do that on the iPhone, it's always really smooth. So Samsung's got to work on that. We'll go into Groupon. I'm not sure if they implemented that as a feature that was slightly first on the right, but if they did, I, I think it looks a little bit weak. We'll go into things to do, Apple on that one. Now, if I come out a little slower, watch this. It looks a lot smoother like the iPhone. So definitely not sure if they did that on purpose, but Amazon. You could see Amazon on the left shortly after by the iPhone. You could see when in application, iPhone flying there, a little bit slower on the Samsung, but not bad. We'll go into Best Buy and you could see Best Buy first there. Well, that was pretty close. Actually, I didn't even see it. Which one won that one? You could see here on this LG TV that was quicker for the iPhone. We're having a little issues with the image 
right there. We'll head up out of here. But what do you think is better, the punch hole or this dynamic island? What do you really dig more? Let's go into eBay. Well, you can see eBay is first there on the left shortly after by the Samsung. So it seems to me like the iPhone may be slightly snappier here, but very slight. But there's a lot of features you're giving up if you go with that over S22 Ultra. At the same time, there's a lot of ecosystem things you're giving up if you go with the S22 Ultra and vice versa. These are very competitive neck and neck phones. You can see right here that the iPhone 14 Pro Max, definitely faster there in games. But I do like this big canvas on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. This dynamic island definitely intruding on my games a little bit more than the punch hole. Let's head up out of there. We'll go into Subway Surfers on both. And which one can do a better job here? Looks like the iPhone is in the lead. And here comes the Samsung. So definitely in games, once again, year after year, it doesn't seem to ever change. Apple, once again, destroying the Samsung there in terms of that load on this game. So I think as the games get more intense, I don't even have many intense games on this particular run, but definitely I think that you're gonna get a lot more performance out of the iPhone when it comes to games this time around. Look at this thing, just smoking fast over there on the left. So gaming, while I do like the punch hole a little bit more to display a little bit more, both are smooth because they're both on those 120 hertz adaptive refresh. I have the iPhone is just quicker there. Let's go into Lightroom. You can see Lightroom was pretty similar on both devices. Let's go into Geekbench 5. And you can see Geekbench 5 first there on the right. I think that's because it's not optimized yet for iPhone. So let's go to 3D Mark here and a little bit faster on the iPhone. So overall, I would say the iPhone actually won this. Not by a lot, but a little, and it really pulled ahead in the games. So if you want more performance, the iPhone is the faster phone here, but the Samsung does have twice the amount of RAM, but it actually needs that amount of RAM, considering that if it had six gigs, it probably wouldn't even be close to how fast this iPhone is. So I'd say the iPhone definitely feels a little snappier. All right, guys, so will we get a reload here on either phone. I highly doubt that will happen, but I always like to check anyway. We'll go into Subway Surfers. We'll go into Dead Trigger here, and we'll go into Starbucks. And I know people are gonna say, did you see how that came out on Dead Trigger? Did you see that weird looking twitchy anime? Yes, One UI is still not the best animations in the world, but it's way better than the Touch Wiz days. It's way better than a lot of other Android phones out there. Not the best, I'm not saying they're beating OnePlus, I'm not saying they're beating everybody, but they're doing a great job of improving year over year, whereas iPhone is still probably the smoothest out there when it comes to just animations. Both of them held everything just fine though, both powerhouses, but I will say Samsung definitely takes way better advantage of its screen with split screen mode and things like that, pop view, stuff like that. But I'll save that for the full comparison. So stay tuned for that when we fully compare these two to help you decide which to buy. And here are our final Geekbench scores. Apple destroying the Samsung here in Geekbench 5, especially on that multi-core. Over a thousand points better in the single core, so no match. You can definitely say that from a benchmark standpoint, Apple is in the lead. Let's go ahead and take a couple of photos here and see how they do perform. So let's take a couple of photos here and see how they perform with opening these cameras. You could see pretty similar. I'm gonna go ahead and open those again, just for the sake of comparison. Three, two, go. You can see Apple a little faster there. When actually firing off the photo, both of them take photos relatively quick. So no real issues there. So let's wrap it up. The iPhone 14 Pro Max from this test is telling me it's technically the faster phone. It feels a little bit faster, but it's not by a lot. The S22 Ultra still feels remarkably quick. I was a little disappointed when this phone first came out. It was a little bit laggy though, and it's never felt quite as overall polished as the S21 Ultra. So I'm really looking forward to the S23 Ultra, but I think either way you go here, whether you want the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the S22 Ultra, both of them are gonna provide you with rock solid performance. However, that doesn't tell the whole story. So be subscribed. I will be comparing these soon in a full comparison showdown between their the entire devices. We're gonna break it down in detail. So I'll see you in that video. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.